Hi everyone, in this video we are going to learn about refresh tokens, their use in modern web application development and how to implement this feature in the .NET Web API using the latest framework. As you can see, I'm using an already prepared project from our ultimate ASP.NET Core book which has the JWT authentication flow already implemented with the help of ASP.NET Core identity. If you want to get more info on the book itself, feel free to check the link in the description below. Refresh tokens are credentials that can be used to acquire new access tokens. When an access token expires, we can use a refresh token to get a new access token from the authentication component. The lifetime of a refresh token is usually set much longer compared to the lifetime of an access token. So, let's see the authentication workflow using the refresh token. In this diagram, First, we see the client authenticates with the authentication component by providing the credentials. Then, the authentication component issues the access token and the refresh token. After that, the client requests the resource endpoints for a protected resource by providing the access token and the resource endpoint validates the access token and provides a protected resource. The third step keeps on repeating until the access token expires. Once the access token expires, the client requests a new access token by providing the refresh token, after which the authentication component issues a new access token and refresh token. Once the refresh token expires, the client needs to authenticate with the authentication server once again and the flow repeats from step 1. So now, you may ask, why do we need both access tokens and refresh tokens? Or why don't we just set a long expiration date, like a month or a year, for the access token? The answer is pretty simple. If we do that, and someone manages to get hold of our access token, they can use it for a long period, even if we change our password. The idea of refresh tokens is that we can make the access token short-lived, so that even if it is compromised, the attacker gets access only for a shorter period. With the refresh token-based flow, the authentication server issues a one-time use refresh token along with the access token. The app stores the refresh token safely. Also, refresh tokens help in smooth authentication workflow without the need for users to submit their credentials frequently and, at the same time, without compromising the security of the app. So, now that we have learned the concept of refresh tokens, let's dig into the implementation part. I already prepared the user class with all the required properties that will show up as additional columns in the ASP.NET Core Users table. I also executed all the necessary migrations to add these columns in the mention table. And we can see them here. To continue, let's create a new record in the shared data transfer objects folder. And Let's name it token DTO. Let's clean this up and make this class a record. We also have to provide the string access token parameter and the string refresh token. Next, we are going to modify the iAuthentication service interface. The create token method that we use for the authentication flow should now return the token DTO. And I will also add a bool parameter to check whether we want to populate the expiry property from the user object. We will see the usage when we modify the create method inside the service class. Of course, since we modify the interface, we have to do the same with the authentication service class. Here, we will first implement two new methods. First, let's create a private string method named generate refresh token that will contain the logic to generate the refresh token. To start with it, let's add a new random number byte array of the size of 32. Then inside the using directive, let's add a new variable and use the random number generator class and the create method to generate a cryptographic random number for this purpose. Then 
let's call the get bytes method, to fill our array with a cryptographic sequence of elements. Finally, we have to return this array converted into a base64 string. Good, but we need another private one that returns claims principal and let's name it get principal from expired token. We will use this one to get the user principal from the expired access token. First, let's create a new JWT settings variable and extract the JWT section from our configuration file using the get section method and providing the name of that section. This section contains some important data for our JWT token. Then we need token validation parameters and I can get that by creating a new token validation parameters instance and populating the required properties. Here we can see all the regular JWT properties that we use when we configure the JWT authentication flow in our app. You can also see that I fetched the secret from the environment variable, which is also the preferred way. And these two last properties are populated from the app settings configuration you saw inside the app settings file. One more thing, you can see the validate lifetime property set to true. Sometimes in our client app, we want to refresh the token before it expires. And that's what we forced here in our API. But if you want to allow the refresh token functionality for the expired tokens as well, set this property to false. Otherwise, you will get an error during validation, which we will implement next, if you send an expired access token. Now, to be able to validate the token, I'm gonna create a new token handler variable and instantiate it with a new JWT security token handler instance. Also, I will create a new security token variable here. So, to validate the token and extract the principal information, we use the validate token method and provide the token as the first argument, token validation parameters as the second one, and the last out parameter that I want to be populated, the security token, if the validation is successful. Now, I need a JWT security token variable and convert the security token to the JWT security token type. I need that because now I can check if the token is null and also more importantly, if the algorithm that is used to create the token signature is not equal to the required algorithm HS256. And for that comparison, I'll use the invariant culture ignore case. If this is true, let's simply throw a new security token exception with the invalid token message. Otherwise, we'll return our principal data from this method. After we are done with these two private methods, we need to generate a refresh token. And to do that, we have to modify the create token method in the same class. First, let's change the signature and add a required parameter. Then, let's generate the refresh token by calling the generate refresh token method. And we need to populate the refresh token property with the generated refresh token. Now, only if the populate expiry parameter is set to true, I want to modify the refresh token expiry time value by adding 7 days from now. Now, let's update the user using the identities update async method and providing the user object. Then, let's add an access token variable, call a new JWT security token handler method and chain the call to the write token method by providing the token options variable. 
Finally, I want to return a token DTO populated with both the access token and the refresh token. With this done, all they have to do is to modify the authentication action. Let's create here a new token DTO variable called the create token method from the authentication service and set the arguments value to true. Also, let's return the OK result with the token DTO argument. That's it regarding the action modification. Now we can start the app and test this by sending the POST request from Postman. We can see the successful authentication and both our tokens. Additionally, if we inspect the database, we are going to find populated refresh token and expiry columns. This looks great and we can continue with the refresh logic. It is a good practice to have a separate endpoint for the refresh token action. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now. For this, I have already prepared a new token controller in the presentation project. But before we continue with the controller modification, I'm going to modify the iAuthentication service interface again. Here I need one more method that returns task token DTO, let's name it refresh token, and provide a token DTO parameter. Of course, with this modification, I have to modify the class. Now let's implement the interface. And first I'll make this method async. Then let's get the principal data by calling the getPrincipal method where we provide the access token as an argument. Also let's get the user and say await user manager dot find by name async and provide the username of the logged in user, which we can find inside the principal data. Now, if the user doesn't exist, or the refresh token is different, or the refresh token is expired, I simply throw a refresh token bad request. It is handled globally, and you can watch the global exception handler video to see how it is implemented. The link will be in the description below. On the other hand, if everything is okay, Let's set the fetched user to the user field and this time return a token by calling the create token method. Here I don't want to update the expiry time of the refresh token, thus sending false as an argument. Finally, let's add one more action in the token controller. Let's paste the code here since it is a very simple implementation. As you can see, we accept a token DTO from the request body and then call the refresh token method by providing the accepted parameter as an argument. Finally, we return the response. Also, you can see I'm using the action filter for the validation part, but it has nothing to do with the refresh logic as much as it is related to web API development best practices, which again you can read about in our mentioned and linked book. Now, let's start the app again and test this implementation. Let's first send the POST authentication request. As before, we have both tokens in the response body. Now let's send the POST refresh request with our previously generated tokens as the request body. And we can see new tokens in the response body. Additionally, if we inspect the database, we will find the same refresh token value. Usually, in your client application, you would inspect the expiry claim of the access token and if it is about to expire, your client app would send the request to the API token endpoint and get a new set of valid tokens. Great! Please do let me know your thoughts about the video by dropping the comment in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. And if you want to get notifications from our channel about future videos, you can also use the bell button. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.